Have you been thinking about installing a drip irrigation system for your home garden, but just don't know where to start? Designing a drip irrigation system may seem like a daunting task, but it's actually much easier than you might think. All that you will need is a writing utensil, a sketch of the area, a few minutes of time, and the desire for a healthy, vibrant garden. Follow along, and by the end of this video, you'll have a plan to help you get all the parts you need for your own drip irrigation system. The very first step is to gather some basic information. What is your water source? And how far away is it from the furthest plant that needs to be watered? In most cases, a home drip system will run from the hose bib, so that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. Now, go grab those measurements and write them down so you can refer to them later. If your garden includes raised or in-ground beds, go ahead and grab their length and width as well. After you've got your measurements, it's time to think about what type of watering devices you'd like to use. In drip irrigation, the watering devices are usually referred to as emitters, and there's quite a wide variety available. You can usually simplify this decision based off the type of plants you'll be watering. For example, sprayers or bubblers for the propagation bed, individual drippers for potted plants, drip line for your small raised bed, or drip tape for long rows of row crops. In this video, we'll be focusing on raised beds with a couple rows of plants in them. This means we'll be using quarter inch drip line as our primary emitter type. Now that we've figured that out, the next step to designing a home drip system is to create a quick sketch of the area from the water source to the furthest location or plant that the system is going to need to be. This allows you to visualize the system before any parts are ordered and makes it much easier to plan out your mainline tubing run and any fittings. Before I start drawing in the main line, I'm gonna put down the measurements that we took onto my sketch. Next, note on the sketch where your water source is. This is where your mainline tubing run will begin. When you draw in your main line, keep in mind any obstacles such as rocks or furniture or pathways so that you can account for those while you draw your mainline tubing. Finish your mainline tubing run at the furthest location it's gonna to need to be to serve all the beds, containers, or plants on the system. I'm gonna use a different color of pen to draw in my main line and my water source. That makes it a little easier to identify with the other information on the sketch. Once the main line is on the sketch, it's time to draw in emitters and fittings. I'm going to start by drawing in our emitter line, which for our raised beds is just gonna be one quarter inch drip line. For that, I'm gonna use this orange pen so I can differentiate it from the other lines on the sketch. Now with our drip line in, it's time to draw our fittings. Fittings include things like T's, one quarter inch barbed couplers, end caps, goof plugs, or even things like coupling valves. For example, we're gonna use a coupling valve on each one of our beds. That way, if we harvest one before the others, we can shut that section down and still run the rest of the system. One thing to always include are some couplings. These can be used for repairs or if you make a bad cut somewhere you didn't want to, you can then just join them together with the use of a coupling. You can draw your fittings any number of ways, from using their actual shapes, to symbols, to different colored writing utensils, or even just a simple tally at the bottom of the page to tell you how many you need. I know every intersection, I need a T. I know every 90 degree turn, I need an elbow. And I know Every bed will need at least two elbows, one to get the tubing going up, and then one to get the tubing over. Anywhere the line ends, I know I need an end cap. And anywhere my drip line ends, I know I need a goof plug to cap it off at the end. I also know I need a one quarter inch coupling anywhere our drip line joins the main line. On this system we're designing, the one quarter inch drip line is gonna be our only emitter, since we just need to irrigate these raised beds. Now, let's count up the fittings we need. Now remember with T's, it was anywhere we split the mainline tubing into three directions. And there is one, two, three, four T's on our sketch. Two elbows per bed, two, four, six, eight, ten. So I know I'll need ten elbows just for the beds themselves. And then I have two other 90 degree turns on there for a total of 12 elbows. Remember, anywhere our mainline tubing ends, we need an end cap. And that's gonna be one on each bed for a total of five end caps. And five coupling valves to serve as an on-off switch for each of our individual beds. We know each run of drip line needs an end cap of its own. Those are called goof plugs. So we're going to include 10 goof plugs. Likewise, we know each run of our drip line is gonna need a quarter inch coupling to connect it to our half inch main line. With two lines per bed, it's gonna be a total of 10 quarter inch couplings. And while our sketch doesn't call for half inch couplings, we'll always want a couple of those anyway, just in case we need to make repairs or make a bad cut during our installation. So I'm gonna include two couplings. With our fittings calculated, let's calculate how much main line and how much drip line we'll need. This is where our measurements that we wrote down come in handy. Usually this is best done in linear feet. Okay, we've got 18 from our water source to the corner and then about 27 feet to get to the bottom, the south end of our sketch here. Then we have about two feet from the main line to each bed. 
So that's going to be 10 more feet. And we know each bed, the header row that's going to go across the top, is going to be about three feet long. This gives us a grand total of about 70 feet of main line. With the drip line, we know our beds are nine feet long. So each run of drip line will be nine feet. With two lines of drip line per bed, that's 18 feet of drip line per bed. Times five beds, that's a total of 90 feet of drip line. With main line and emitter line like drip line or drip tape, it's usually best to round up. This ensures you have enough to complete your installation and you'll always wanna have a little bit left over to make repairs. If your sketch calls for 40 feet of main line, round up to 50. If you'd like to take additional steps to ensure good operation of your system, we do have a couple recommended but not required steps you can take. The first is to test the flow rate of your water source. This will tell you how many gallons per hour it can provide. This is important because you could compare it to the sum of all your emitters, which is how many gallons per hour your system is going to demand. As an example, we're gonna be using 90 feet of drip line with a half gallon per hour emitter spaced every 12 inches. This means our system's flow demand is gonna be 45 gallons per hour. We want our water source to provide at least that, preferably a little bit over, to ensure there's enough water for all of our emitters. At 45 gallons per hour, almost any residential spigot is gonna be able to provide that, which is why it's a recommended step. Testing a water source is easy. All it takes is a timer and a bucket and a little bit of time. If you'd like to learn more about testing the flow rate of your water source, check out the video we have there in the top right. It'll walk you through step by step. With the flow rate of the system determined and knowing the overall length of our main line, we can now decide on a main line size. To simplify it, we're just gonna follow the 200-200 rule. One half inch main line is good for 200 feet in length or 200 gallons per hour in flow. Our system falls within both of those with 70 feet of main line and 45 gallons per hour of system flow, so we'll be using a half inch. Three quarter inch is a 480-480 rule. One inch main line is a 960-960 rule. And even some systems go as low as a quarter inch main line, and it follows a 30-30 rule. Most average size home gardens are going to be well served by a half inch main line. While you're at this step in the process, you'll want to consider your head assembly. Every irrigation system needs a head assembly. The head assembly consists of a timer, which is optional, but very handy if you want to automate the system, a backflow preventer, a filter, a pressure regulator, and finally an adapter that connects your mainline tubing to the rest of the head assembly. The head assembly then connects to the hose bin so that you can get water to your irrigation system. Most drip irrigation head assemblies are gonna operate at 25 PSI. So you'll want a 25 PSI pressure regulator. There are some exceptions for things such as drip tape, which operate at 15 PSI, but the vast majority of drip irrigation components operate best at 25 PSI, including our quarter inch drip line. Okay, now let's take a look at what we got. We have 70 feet of main line, 90 feet of drip line, 12 half inch elbows, four half inch tees, five coupling valves, five half inch end caps, two half inch couplings, just in case, 10 quarter inch couplings, and 10 quarter inch goof plugs to close off our quarter inch drip line. For our head assembly, which are the parts that connect to the water source and then to the mainline tubing, I'm going to need a backflow preventer, a filter, a pressure regulator, and a hose by tubing adapter, which is the part that connects the mainline tubing to the rest of the assembly. Although it's completely optional, I'm also going to include a timer as I'd like to automate the system. Now, thanks to your sketch and design, you know what parts and how many of those parts you need. There's a couple ways to go about getting them. You can grab them individually or you can order a kit. Our kits show their contents on their page and you'll notice each kit contains the items that are on this design. Elbows, tees, end caps, even the head assembly is included in nearly all of our kits. If your design calls for a disproportionately high amount of fittings, for example, if you have a lot of 90 degree turns, you're gonna need way more elbows than is average, our kits can easily be customized to add or remove any items you need more or less of. I noticed that, according to my sketch, it matches up pretty well with our deluxe drip irrigation kit for raised beds. With just a few small changes, it can be almost a perfect match to our design. We're just gonna remove the one quarter inch elbows, the roll of blank quarter inch tubing, since our design doesn't call for it, the six inch spaced roll of drip line, and the button drippers. And I'm going to add one coupling valve and two elbows. Now, if you've just finished your plan and you're ready to learn about installation, click our video right here for our step-by-step -step installation guide.